This is Lesson 61 on latches and flip-flops. We're going to be talking about sequential logic. Now so far all of the circuits that we've designed have been combinational circuits in which the output depends only on the current input. So for example in your multiplexes or adders or subtractors, decoders, whenever you change the input the output changes. However in sequential logic the output depends not only on the current input, but also on past input values. Therefore we need some type of memory to remember these past input values. Consider these two cross-coupled inverters. Here's an inverter. Suppose this output is 0, then this output will be 1. If this input is 1, then this output is 0. So this is a stable state. We call it state 1. But look over here. Suppose this output was 1, then this output would be 0 for this inverter. And this input 0, the output's 1. So this is a second stable state. So the output of this top inverter could either be 0 or 1. However, there's no easy way to get data in and out of here. So let's consider this case. Suppose instead of the inverters we use NAND gates and we cross-couple them. We take the output of this Q, bring it to the input of this NAND gate, and we'll bring an input here. We're going to call it not R. And we'll call this one not S. We'll take the output here. We're going to label it not Q and bring that into the input of this NAND gate. I set up a truth table here with not s and not r having four possible values. And for convenience we've listed the truth table for the NAND gate. Remember the output of a NAND gate is zero only if both inputs are one. So let's suppose that this input is one and this input is one. And now let's assume that the output of this one is zero and see what we get. We got a zero and a one coming in here so this output must be one. And this will have a 1 and 1 here, and a 1 and 1 here means this output 0. So this is a stable state. With two inputs 1, 1, we get 0 and 1 for the output. Let's put that into our truth table. 1, 1 gives 0, 1. Now let's see what happens if we make s go to 0. If s goes to 0, I've got a 0 and a 1 here. 0 and a 1 means this output has to switch to 1. Well, as soon as this output switches to 1, I have a 1 and 1 here, so this output has to switch to 0. 1 and 1 is 0. Now I've got 0, 0 here. This output is 1. Okay, so this is a stable state. Anytime I make not S 0 and not R 1, this output Q has to be 1 and not Q has to be 0. So let's put that in our truth table. A 0, 1 for 0 for not s, 1 for not r, the output q is going to be 1 and not q is 0. We're going to call this the set state. We're going to set q to 1. So we set q to 1 by bringing not s low. Okay, now let's, let's see what happens when we bring not s back to 1. So here's where the magic occurs. We're going to bring not s back to 1. And what do I have? I had a 0 here, so 0 and 1 is going to mean the output of the NAND gate stays 1. I've got a 1 and a 1, so it stays 0. So nothing happens. When I bring not S back to 1, this Q stays 1. Well, now I'm back in the 1, 1 state, but instead of 0, 1, I now have a 1, 0. So it looks like I can get either case here. So I have a 1, 0. Okay. So we're going to call this the store state because I've stored the 1 in Q. Okay, now we're back to the 1, 1 state. Let's try to bring not R, zero and see, not R to 0 and see what happens. If not R goes to 0, I've got a 1 and a 0 coming in. So this output not Q has to go to 1. I now have a 1, 1 here. So this output must go to 0, Q. So Q is 0, 0, 0 is 1, so it stays 1. So this is another stable state. If not R is 0 and not S is 1, then this is the reset state. 
where q is 0, not q is 1, not s is 1, not r is 0. Call that the reset state. What do you suppose is going to happen when we bring not r back to 1? Yep, it's just going to stay there. Watch this. Not r is 1. We've got 0 and 1. The output stays 1. 1 and 1. The output stays 0. So we're back to this store state, 0 and 1. Okay, now the only case we haven't looked at is the 0, 0 state. So let's make both s and not s and not r 0. Well, any 0 input is going to give a 1 for the output. So in this case, both q and not q are 1. Well, this doesn't look good. I've called this not q. We sort of expect these to be opposite, but in this case they're not. They're both 1. We're going to call this the disallowed state. We're going to, we want to disallow it because we'd sort of like not q to be the opposite of q here. So we'll call this the disallowed state, even though if we really put a 0 and 0 coming in, we'll get 1 and 1 at the output. Okay. So we have the store state. We're going to call it q0 and not q0. Here I use an exclamation point for not. Here I use a tilde for not. We have all different ways of writing nots, you remember. So the upshot is that 1, 1 is the store state. 1, 1 is the store state. To set it, we bring not s low. And if we bring it back high, it stays set. To reset it, we bring not r low, bring it back high, and it stays reset. So we call this a not s not r latch. If you look in the dictionary, the definition of a latch is to close or lock with, or as if with a latch, to catch or fasten. So we latch a zero in here by bringing not r low and back high and we latch a 1 in here by bringing not s low and back high. Okay, but we still had this disallowed state. We'd sort of like to get around it. Let's see what we can do. Let's add another pair of NAND gates to this uh, cross NAND gate that we had. And let's bring a clock in here. So we'll bring a clock system that goes high and low here. and Let's see what the truth table for this would be. Okay, let's start out with a clock of 1 and s of 0. So if we have a 0, 0 here, then 1 and a 0, you remember, will be a 1 here. So this would be not s low. As long as the clock is high and s is 0, then this will be a 1. r is 0, this will be a 1 if the clock is high. So this is the store state. That's the store state we had from before. And now if we bring S0 and R1 and the clock one, well now you've got a 1 and a 1 here, which means not R is 0. Well that was the case of the reset before. Remember, in the reset case for this not S not R latch, you bring not R low. So that's the reset state. If you make S1 and R0, and the clock is 1, now you'd have a 1, 1 here, which will be a 0 for not S. If not S is 0, remember that's the case for setting this latch. So that's the set state. And if both S and R are 1 and the clock is 1, well then we'll have a 0, 0 here. Well that was our disallowed state, which would cause a 1, 1 out here. So we still have this disallowed state, but what happens when the, this is all when the clock is 1, what happens when the clock is 0? If the clock is 0, then both of these outputs are going to be 1, no matter what S and R are. So that's the store state again. So we can produce a store state by simply bringing the clock low. Okay, but we still have this disallowed state, and the source of this disallowed state, of course, is that we somehow have allowed S and R to be the same thing. So if S and R are both 1, we have this disallowed state. 
If they're both zero, we have the store state, but we can also get the store state by bringing the clock low. So let's see how we can get rid of the case where the S and R are the same. So to do that, we can just add an inverter here. So let's bring a single input D in here. So S is going to be the same as D, but now R is not D. So now S and R by definition are going to be different. <coughs> And let's see what the truth table is for this. <clears throat> if D is 0 and clock is 1, then S is 0 and the clock is 1, and R is 0. So that's going to be the, uh, if, if D is 0 and the clock is 1, then R is going to be 1, and if R is 1, that was the reset state we had here. So Q is going to be 0 and not Q is going to be 1. If D is 1, then S is 1 and R is 0. But that's the set state we have here. So Q is going to be 1 and not Q is going to be 0. And if we bring clock low, well clock is low, that's going to be the store state. So here is the truth table for this, we call it a D latch in which Q is the same as D, you see, as long as the clock is high, and then when the clock goes low, Q stays the same. So note that Q follows D when the clock is high. So if the clock is high, if D is 0, Q is 0, if D is 1, Q is 1. So you can change D as long as the clock is high, and Q will be the same as D, and as soon as you bring the clock low, then that last value of D gets latched in Q. So we call this a D latch. We sometimes call it a transparent latch because Q is sort of, tran the whole thing is sort of transparent. D just goes right through as if nothing was here as long as the clock is high. You bring the clock low and the value gets latched in. So that's a D latch. Now, in general, we would like to have the change take place on the rising edge of the clock. So let's recall how this one works. This is our not S not R latch. You remember the store state is when both inputs are 1. And to set it, we bring not S low and then back high, it stays set. To reset it, we bring R low back high, it resets it. Now, let's take a look at this more complicated looking circuit. My claim is this is an edge trigger D flip-flop. We're going to call flip-flops things that change on the rising edge of the clock. So, this is our not S not R latch. We know how that behaves. This sort of looks like other ones. We've added some more connections in here. Let's see what happens. Suppose the clock is 0 and D is 1. Let's see if we can figure out what happens. Well, if the input to a NAND gate is 0, then the output has to be 1, right? because remember, it's 0 only if both inputs are 1. So this is the store state. So whatever Q is, it's going to stay Q. Now we got D set to 1. Well, we have a 1 and 1 here. This means the output here is going to be 0 and this is 0 is going to come in here, which is going to force this output to be 1. So at this point we have a 1, a 1, a 1, and a 0 here. Clock is 0 and D is 1. Let's see what happens if we bring the clock high. If we bring the clock high, we're going to have a 1 and a 1 here, which is going to force this to be 0. We remember when not S goes to 0, that's the set state, so this gets set to 1 and this goes to 0. So on the rising edge of this clock, as soon as the clock went to 1, whatever D was, in this case 1, it becomes 1. Now suppose, say, D changes to 0. Let's see what happens. Well, this stays 1, and this stays 1, and this stays 0, so nothing happens. So D can go back to 0, this stays 1. Suppose the clock goes back to 0. If the clock goes back to 0, well, that forces this to be 1, 
and now we have a 1 and a 1 this goes to 0 but this is the store state so it stays 1 so it changed to 1 on the rising edge of the clock D went to 0, clock went to 0, still stayed 1 now D is 0 let's see what happens when the clock goes high again when the clock goes high we have a 1 and a 1 and a 1 here so not R goes to 0 but not R is the reset so this goes to 0, this goes to 1 well 0 is what D is so on the rising edge of the clock this 0 goes to Q and what happens if D goes to 1? Well since this is 0 this stays 1, this all stays the same, this stays 0 so nothing changes and when the clock goes back to 0 we have a 1, a 1 and a 0, this goes back to 1 now so it stays reset to 0. So it only changes on the rising edge of the clock. Now let's look at this even more complicated one. Here we've just added a couple more inputs. This is an asynchronous set and reset. Suppose we bring a set in here. We'll go through an inverter. So if this pulsed high, this pulse is low, and here's a reset that we bring in here, and we bring they also go into these NAND gates as well. But let's see what happens. We've already seen what happens in here. But suppose you pulse uh, S high, this goes low. Well, as soon as this goes low, you have a zero input. It's a three input NAND gate. So this immediately goes to one. The clock hasn't changed. This is asynchronous, which means it's not on the rising edge of the clock. So this goes to one. So it sets it immediately. And if you bring it back to one, it stays one because this was a zero coming in here so it stays one and now you have a one 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 coming in here so we can do an asynchronous set by just bringing this input high what happens if we bring this reset high well this goes to zero well now you have a zero input to this NAND gate that will immediately make this output one you got a one a one and a one so this does an immediate reset, asynchronous reset, and if you bring this back to 1, since this is a 0 now, you have an output 1 stays here, and you got a 1, 1, 1 stays 0. So this is a circuit that can, that can implement an edge-triggered D flip-flop with an asynchronous set and an asynchronous reset.